Hey traders, this is Ron Haid at Market Tamer. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing great. As always, nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or selling security. Trading stocks and options involves risk and specific financial issues should always be addressed with your financial advisor. I apologize for no videos the past two nights. I'm battling a head cold. I made it through all of winter without getting sick and it finally got me. So it might be a little slower than usual tonight. Um, we'll take off. We'll take a start with the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. It lost a lousy 65 cents today, still sitting up there at new all-time highs. The Dow, again, sitting up there near all-time highs. Then you look at something like the Qs, they were down just a little bit. And the IWM, um, it's just coiling here. This is really interesting. You know, the S&P's been leading, Dow second, you know, Qs third, so to speak, or thereabouts. But with the IWM coiling here, you know, if we break above it, could it be the one that leads the next like higher? We've already had one of the biggest V reversals from a sell-off in the market's history. But again, the resistance is all the way up there. So we'll just keep an eye here on IWM. Now we have stocks in the news tonight that are reporting earnings. So Faceplant, if we type in FB, you'll see as of about 4.29 p.m. Eastern today, it's trading around 191, up like hmm, nine bucks. 191 is going to put it up in here, which assuming that's where it opens tomorrow and a lot can happen overnight. We could reverse, we could go higher, yada, yada. But then the gap fills the target up around two something, you know, 217 or so. One thing I really like to highlight here is the orange line. Nothing's perfect and nothing works all the time, but sometimes it's absolutely remarkable in how well it can do. That is the institutional moving average, the 50 day in orange. Once we got above it, when the market rallied back in January, We've stayed above it. We even marched along it here at the end of March, and now we're just zooming higher. It's a, it's a great litmus test. Uh, Microsoft, MSFT. This one wasn't moving that much when I checked a little bit ago. Right now, it's up just over three and a half bucks. Again, new all-time highs. It's doing all right. And then Tesla had earnings. Closed around 258. And let's see where we're at live. 259, 260. A buck or two and change. I don't know, I'd be surprised if Tesla has no movement on its earnings report, but maybe this is the time it doesn't. Just remember, keep an eye at 250. That's only 9, 10 points from where it's trading. You know, there's news that comes out on the earnings call, et cetera, and we roll over and close below 250. That's where the next major support level is just south of 200, you know, 180s, 190s. So otherwise, still nothing going on here on Tesla. Boeing, I saw some articles written and it just amazes me. It's like, oh, is Boeing bottom now that earnings are in? Well, according to Thinkorswim earnings for this morning, the stock hasn't moved that much. To me, it's not about earnings. Um, it's about how badly are they going to get sued? Did they cover up? Did they do all these things? Potentially, not that they did. Um, but are they guilty or aren't they? And what's the ramifications going to be? That's why I still think a protective put is warranted, not just for the earnings report, now the earnings report is passed, but given the current state of what might be going on here, you know, zero is a price target and so is infinity, right? It can go either way here. So I, my point is still very, very cautious on Boeing because we don't know what's out there, what's going to end up being the final result. Um, Amazon, they're due to report tomorrow night. Stock was up like, I think 10 bucks here after hours, probably in 10 due to Facebook and some other stuff in Microsoft. AM, let's try this again, 1917, yeah, it's up like 16, 17 bucks. So it's basically taking back what it's uh, lost today during regular market hours. But Amazon's still bullish. But again, anything can happen with earnings, gap down, gap up. I had a question on Intel, and it looks like companies did a report on the 25th, which is also what Chris's question was about. So tomorrow at market close, we'll have Amazon and Intel. It's been a really nice rally like 15% here in about three months. But if I zoom in, we have a gap here. If we would gap lower, and I'd also want to close below the 20-day EMA in red, that would be a bearish reversal or an island reversal in candlestick terminology. That would concern me. But right now, anything can happen. We could go higher. We could go lower. We just have to wait for that report. And if I were to look to see if there is a seasonality edge, if I come in here, by the way, I'm at financial and I'm at search and I'm at seasonality. If I take a look at how Intel trades throughout the year, it's sort of a not much of a mover until sort of into December sometimes historically. But let's look at this map marker right here. 
56%, 63%, 54%, and the rise is only by about 3%. So there's no huge bias here for a stock like Intel based on its past historical track record. There's no big major seasonality move here. Um, unlike other stocks that have been moving higher, like Xilinx and some of those. So I hope that ample answers your question on Intel. If I do take us back, I didn't do this, but just to show you what all the data on Intel is, we've already taken out the all-time highs. So right now, with it being at 52-week high territory, the sky's the limit. And then one stock that I, I saw moving today, I just wanted to highlight, was FLIR. We took out the previous hump high there in February, which basically filled the gap. With this earnings move, and yeah, it did come off its highs, but really the previous target's up around 62.50, which is almost nine bucks, almost 20% higher would be the upside target here. And again, for educational purposes, I would consider using the 20-day EMA in red. That works often as a nice little trailing stop up and down. All right, gang, so there wasn't a whole lot of movement in the broad averages, so we didn't miss a whole lot by not having any videos here the past two days, but I do expect to be back here with you again tomorrow. All right. Should have some Amazon fireworks, hopefully, to talk about. Have a great week, gang, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take good care.